start the message today, um, <clears throat> I would like to ask you to continue also praying for Pastor Carlson. This would be his first Sunday, that, uh, the first Father's Day that he will be having uh, without his father. And as, as you know, a couple of months back, he, uh, his mother went to be with the Lord. In just a couple of weeks, uh, his father went to be with the Lord, so it must be very tough on him. He uh, will be out for this week. He was uh, taking a week of vacation, and, and it's always a pleasure to come and uh, share the word. Um, I don't know, but every time I pray or every time I preach, it gets really hot in here. Is it? Is it that? Do I bring the heat, or uh, or 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 am I just nervous? Uh, either or, whatever it is, it's um, it's a blessing to be able to come and and share and share the word. I had to preach in the winter time, you know. So so if, if it's too cold, it'll get a lot better. <clears throat> we would like, uh, like I mentioned previously, we honor our parents or our fathers. Uh, the Bible does say, honor your father and mother. Honra a tu padre y a tu madre. Uh, and that's uh, as sons and as now, as fathers ourselves, we understand that responsibility is a great responsibility. Um, that uh, many people uh, or many men don't take that as seriously. Now, this is not... Um, a message necessarily intended just for Father's Day, um, you know, because um, it is interesting. Or have you ever noticed that on Mother's Day, we tell our mothers how great they are, and on Father's Day, we tend to tell them to tell the fathers what they need to do to be great fathers? It's almost as if a mother automatically becomes a great mother while a father must continually work on it, you know? Um, I hope that as I, can, as, as I preach this message, you don't feel like, oh, you know, this is... A list what pair of what fathers need to do. Far be it from that, it is a Father's Day's message. It is a message where I want to challenge the man, hopefully not just of the church, but even in the community, that our example will be in such a way that people would want to follow our lead. More than that, that they will be willing to follow, that our families would be willing to follow our faith. Isn't it true, fathers, that it is tough? I mean, it's tough. As we... Uh, instruct our kids as, as we spend time with them and as we um, and try to enroll, you know, to uh, guide them in spiritual matters, uh, they ca- it comes a time where we're thinking, have how I spent enough time in prayer with them, for them, and bringing them to church? And you just figure, Lord, they're in your hands. Today, if you have your Bibles here today, I want us to turn to Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 30. I want us to speak on the subject that God is looking for a man, a man to stand in the gap. Will you turn with me to Ezekiel 22, verse 30, please? God is looking for a few good men, as a matter of fact, because clearly God's heart is moved to act when people cry out on behalf of others. In fact, This verse that we're about to read indicates that God is searching and waiting for people to stand in the gap so we may respond mercifully. So he may respond mercifully. This is what uh, Ezekiel 22, verse 30 reads. And I'm reading from the New King James, uh, from the King James Version. And it says, I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it. But listen, one of the uh, saddest uh, uh, prophecies that Ezekiel brings, and he says, but I found none. I fo- but I found none. Now, it's interesting that uh, <clears throat> although this verse deals with the sins of Jerusalem, and it deals with, um, um, <clears throat> with the sad situation with uh, the tribe of Judah and how they went to idolatry and they're oppressing the people. And if you look there, uh, let me, I asked you to look in the Bible, but I haven't even opened mine yet. But in Ezekiel chapter 22, listen to the type of sin that was going on in, uh, in, Jerusalem, in, in Jerusalem. It says in verse 28, a couple of verses before, it says, Her prophets plastered them with untempted mortar, seeing false visions and divining lies. For them, saying, Thus says the Lord God, when the Lord had not spoken. They were false prophets. The people of the land had used oppression, committed a robbery, mistreated the poor and needy, and they wrongfully oppressed the strangers. Now, 
That seems to be kind of like our times when there's a lot of oppression, when there's a lot of people that are not necessarily living according to what God tells them. And God is saying, I am looking for somebody who's willing to stand in the gap. Someone like maybe Moses, if you recall, when um, after uh, the, the people of Israel, when he was uh, in Mount Sinai, you know, and he was bringing the Ten Commandments, and, and as he comes down, remember what the people of Israel had, had made out of gold? A golden calf. And they were worshiping it because they thought, well, Moses, he's gone, and uh, we have to make a God for ourselves that will lead us. And, and, and God said, I'm going to destroy these people. And remember, who stood in the gap? Who was there interceding for the people? That was Moses. As a matter of fact, in Psalm uh, 106, verse 23, um, it says, Therefore, he said that he would destroy them. And listen to this. It says, Had not Moses, his chosen one, stood before him in the breach, in the gap. In Spanish, they call it la brecha. If he had not stood there in the gap, pleading for his people to turn away his wrath, lest he destroy them. Oh, brothers and sisters, God is continuing to look for a few men that are willing to take the challenge. And obviously he would like a lot more men. But isn't it true that uh, there's a high percentage of kids growing up without parents? Without dads, maybe? When I say um, um, that uh, God is definitely wants to use people, uh, and today, Father's Day, my, my challenge and my desire is, for you as a, a father to continue doing that which you are doing. The fact that you are here is because you understand the importance and the, 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 the priorities that it takes to be a godly man. You understand that you must love God with all your heart. We, we might say that it's a dying art today to be a good man, to be a good father. There are not many in our nation anymore. But thank God that we have a few good men here, here at Grace. We could always use a few more. And we thank God today for the good man he sent us. So therefore, I want us to look that God is looking for men. I did this um, PowerPoint presentation, but it seems like it's not. Oh, there it is. Okay, men who have learned... To lean on the Lord. I, I try to follow a Pastor Carson as he does this. because I, you know, I just wanted to find out how this works. And it turns out I still need some instructions on how it works. But man is continuing to look for, or God is continuing to look for men who have learned to lean on the Lord. I believe with all my heart that as you come to church, as you come to get fed spiritually, to be challenged by God, that as a man of God, you understand that God is the priority in your life. Yes, it's hot. Is anybody here sweating? Oh, not many of you? Great. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm sweating double that, believe me. It's hotter, you know, heat rises. But listen, we understand that the priority of, of, of being a, a, a good man for God, to so standing in the gap. Yes, we might not be prophets, you know, prophesying like Ezekiel. We might not be like Billy Graham with big uh, evangelistic meetings. But just the fact that you understand the priorities of leaning to God and in the community, they see you. They see you as standing in the gap. You set the tone because God is with you. Proverbs 3 verse 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not in your own understanding. Don't trust on, on your self-effort. In all your ways, it says, acknowledge Him and He shall direct your paths. As we are here in in church, as we are here worshiping, we understand that. We lean on the Lord for our salvation. I think the battery is dead here. Okay. We lean on the Lord for our salvation. On, on Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, it says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. Because it is what? Remember? It's a well-known verse. It is un regalo de Dios. It's a gift of God. It's nothing that you could actually work for, but it's something that you receive by faith. Not of works, lest any man should boast. We, may, we men are bad about trying to be in control of everything, to make things happen. Often, isn't it true that uh, uh, ladies find it easier to rest on the Lord and lean on Him for salvation? 
See, we want to fix things. Sometimes we want to fix things that are not broken. Just the other day, I was uh, uh, mowing the lawn at the house, and um, from the garage to the, the house, there's like a 10 feet space, and, and, and there's a wire that I noticed the previous uh, owners, they had a direct TV, and so they had this, this antenna, and the wire would just go down on the floor. So every time I, I had to ask Enrique to pick it up so I can go through with the lawnmower. Well, the other day as I was back there, you know, I, I thought, how about if I get some clippers and just cut those off, you know? We don't have direct TV, so just cut it off. So there goes Mr. Fix-It Man, Mr. Know-It-All. Honey, I got this. Don't worry about that. So I went, I cut the, I cut the cables, and then uh, that, that evening, um, I think the Marius or Andres says, Dad, we don't have Wi-Fi. We don't have Wi-Fi, you know. And then Eric is like, did you pay the bill? <laughs> you know? So, no, I said, we, we paid the bill. You know, we're still up to date. So uh, I called I call the Xfinity guy, you know, said, we're not getting any, any internet. And, and he said, well, um, you know, let's do some troubleshooting, this and that. And he was saying, well, uh, everything's working from our side of the, you know, you know uh, problem. But we can send an agent there, you know. And then as I was talking to him, I remember that I had cut some cables back there. Well, sure enough, I said, you know, I, they're going to send an, an, an agent down, but I remember that I had cut the cable from DirecTV, but I cut also the cable that was coming from the pole, from the line, or, or from the, the Wi-Fi. And I thought, why try to fix it if it wasn't broken? I cut something that wasn't right. We, man, we want to try to fix things, don't we? We don't want to ask directions, remember? And praise God for the GPSs. GPS, is if you put in the uh, correct answer or uh, the correct address, you're doing fine. But listen, man, men of God, the few men that are here, those who are willing to stand with their wives and with their kids and say, me and my house will serve the Lord, you guys are standing in the gap. And I thank God for that. Those of you who are, are not married yet, those of you who are probably thinking, well, you know, I don't know if I want to get married, you know? There's a lot of things. The government's trying to redefine the marriage. Uh, uh, they belittle the husbands. There is no, uh, 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 there's disregard for the, the leadership of the home. And there's a lot of uh, percentage of divorce. Young men, don't get disillusioned. God has a special person for you. My wife and I, even before Jonathan was born, we were, we've been praying for their, their future mates, their husband or wives and husbands. And we still pray for them. And they laugh and they're like, oh, daddy, don't pray for that. Well, we do. Why? We want them to have a stable marriage. Isn't that what it's all about? Aren't communities blessed or, might I say, cursed because of the lack of involved parents? God is looking for men who have learned to lean on the Lord for their salvation. God is looking for men who are willing to learn, lean on God for <clears throat> their strength for strength <clears throat> Isaiah 40 verse 30 and 31 says even the youth shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall but listen those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings as eagles they shall run and not be weary they shall walk and not faint God will continue to be with those who lean on God for their salvation. We'll continue to be with those who are leaning on God for their strength. As time passes and, and, and you start feeling like you're, you're losing control of your home or of your kids, God says, trust in God. Don't trust in yourself for your strength. You've trusted for your salvation on God. Why wouldn't you trust them that God will guide your kids, right? Yes, sometimes they could be rebellious. Yes, there are um, uh, um, some wayward kids. I don't know wayward kids is the, is the appropriate word, but remember the parable of the, um, of the son who goes and spends all his money and, and just leaves his, his home. Um, uh, the father was still there continuing to provide strength in their home. So, men who have learned to lean on the Lord for their salvation, their strength, but also who have learned to lean on the Lord for soundness, for wisdom. You know that uh, this is uh, 
this is the prayer or the second prayer that God always answers with a positive is found in, um, in James chapter 1, 5. Listen to what it says. It says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. This is one of the only two prayers any man can pray with the answer is always yes. Did you know that? I mean, we could pray for, for some other things, Lord. Should I marry this person? Which college should I go, Lord? Or should I go to college? Or just different prayers. And you're not sure what God, I will say. But if you ask God for wisdom, will he give it to you? It says, it says so right there. He will give it to all liberally, without reproach. Do you know what the other prayer it is that God always answers positively? Does anyone know? I got one. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Thank you for the volunteers who brought water. Uh, <clears throat> the other prayer is, for whoever calls on the name of the Lord, what does it say? Shall be saved. Si alguien llama al Señor, clama, va a ser salvo. That's a positive answer. God will save you if you claim uh, uh, and ask God to save you. So, for strength, for soundness, God will give you that. So I thank God for the few men who have learned to lean on God. Just the fact that you are here, I know. Your, your strength, your salvation, the soundness of mind is here, found in the Lord. Secondly, we can also say that God is looking for men who have learned who have learned to lead. Now, by leading, you know, sometimes I, I would think leaders are the ones who are always in authority and they could be authoritarian, but it's great responsibility. God has placed the men in the home as heads of their homes, as leaders. And sometimes if we don't take action, somebody else will. Maybe our wife will take action, which, you know, I think it would make sense, right? But God says, listen, you have the responsibility to be leaders in the home. But first, before we get to being leaders in the home, I want you to consider being to lead the flesh and not let the flesh lead you. Galatians 5, 16 and 17 says, I said then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another so that you do not do the things that you wish. If you let your flesh be the leader, you know what, uh, what's going to happen? You're going to be living according to emotions, of, according to your passions. And God says, walk according to the Spirit. Walk in the Spirit. Men who have learned to lead the flesh will not fall in the, tempt in, in the temptations of the flesh. The Apostle Paul writes in Galatians 2.10 in the same epistle, and he says, For I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live. It is no, um, but Christ lives in me. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave him, himself for me. Man must lead our flesh, or the flesh will lead you. How many men have we found, even in Hollywood or, in, or even within our neighborhoods? who had what we would consider, quote-unquote, perfect marriages, you know, nice homes, great kids, and all of a sudden everything comes down because of infidelity, because of uh, 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 breaking their vows. And now we have kids growing up in single-parent homes, and maybe they see uh, Father's Day not as a day to honor and celebrate the person who would be their mentor, the person who would be their, 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 their role model to follow. But uh, there's a great void there. And instead of having good feelings in Father's Day, they feel anger and uh, depressed, uh, depressed. Or probably see Father's Day as just any other day. Like, is it Hall uh, Halloween or Father's Day? And see no difference. And for all of you who, who probably came from single-parent homes, I want to reach out to you also. I came from a single-parent home. Um, I think I remember my dad 
seen him like when I was four or five years old a couple of times. Um, and then I didn't see him until I was like 17 years old. And um, he, he was definitely missed. There was no, there's a great void. But you know one of the great things that you get when you come to know Jesus Christ? Oh, and this is one of the great blessings. You know that God is referred to as our Heavenly Father. True, I never went fishing with the person that should have been my dad. True, he never learned, or he never taught me how to probably go hunting. I would have loved that. I haven't taken my kids go hunting because I don't have a concealed carry or like whatever. <laughs> but still, I might do that, guys. But, but you know, one of the things that really, that, that gives me a certain passion to be able to live for God's glory is the fact that he, as our Heavenly Father, he came and he saved me. He sent his son to save me. And he wants me to be for his glory and honor. Everything that, uh, that, that gives me passion to live for him is because what he has done for, uh, for me. When I meet and greet each, each one of you, many of you who have, who have already retired or who are still raising kids, and I see the passion that you guys have for Jesus, man, that, that kind of like, woo, it goes shivers down my, uh, my spine or, you know, on my skin thinking, I want to follow the role models. The other day I was talking to a brother here at Grace, and I was saying, brother, as I see you, I see you like a grandpa to my kids. On, on the father's side. And I see you as a dad. And isn't it true that there's a verse in the Bible that says that he who comes to me, and who leaves family, will find many fathers and mothers and, and, and more family members? And I'm trying to uh, paraphrase that because I know it in Spanish, but I don't know it in English. But do you know what I'm saying? Do you know that God says, hey, even the widow, the widow can come and have a family here. The homeless can come and, and, and have a blessing within the church. If you come from a, from a broken family, if you probably have never met your, your dad or, or your dad is, is, is gone, listen, God is our Heavenly Father. He sets the tone for our lives. We can be blessed by the fact that we can lean on God. We can be leaders of our home. And just the fact that you didn't come uh, with a dad at home, it doesn't mean that you cannot become a great dad for, for God, a great husband for your wife. A great dad for your kids. Therefore, man, God is looking for men who have learned to lead, lead their flesh. Man is looking, uh, God is looking for men who can lead their families. Ephesians 5.23 says the following. Thanks, Karina. I'm not going to use it because I think the battery is, is out. <clears throat> I see you guys drinking water, so that's giving me permission to drink water, too. <laughs> <clears throat> It says the following. It says, For the husband is the head of the wife, as also Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. <clears throat> Headship isn't being the big boss. It's a loving relationship. It's a commitment to your, to your family, to your wife. She is not less, any less value, but valuable. Rather, she is more fragile and in need of a strong yet loving leadership. Uh, <clears throat> <laughs> I was thinking of even the image of, maybe I'm going to say this word wrong, but I have a lot of you who can help me, chivalry. Chivalry. There you go. Hey, you understand. Uh, caballerismo, they call it. You know, I, when, and I'm pretty sure that this will ring true uh, for, for men. You know, like, remember guys, when we were like 10 or 12, and we wanted to be that, that, that uh, blueprint or the prince trying to save the damsel in distress? Do you remember when we used to stand and, 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 and go like this in front of the mirror, trying to be, you know, like, I'm going to go save the, the, the damsel in distress? Chivalry, is it? Chivalry. Why have we lost that? True, we're already 30, 40, 50, 60 years old. But wives... Isn't it true that you like being felt protected? Isn't it true that, that when, when the husband comes home, you feel, okay, you know, we're kind of, we're safe? Not that Superman is here. It's just the fact that God has put in the husband the leadership. We can use that, but far be it from us. 
Remember, Jesus said, I am the, the head of the church, just like the Father is the head of, of the home. And remember what Jesus did? He gave himself for the church, and God pleads. God asks the man, man, we must stand in the gap and say, yes, I will defend my wife. I will be there for my kids. I have no time for the flesh. I have time to come and bring my family to the Lord's house. Whether it's freezing outside, whether it's, it's hot, Caliente, right? It's hot. Regardless of the, uh, being uh, uncomfortable, God wants men to be willing to stand in the gap to tell our kids this is the way to go. The Bible says that our wives are a weaker vessel. And this is not an insult. Rather, it's a compliment to her. She's not less, any less valuable. Rather, she's more fragile and in need of strong yet loving leadership. leadership. So when we, when we spend time with the family, we can t- let them know, we love you guys. This is a great responsibility and a great privilege. The hardest thing that you will ever do, man, will be to be a good husband and a good father to your children. Why? Because it takes time, it takes patience, it takes dedication. Do you remember the... the uh, the uh, prophet, or not prophet, but uh, Eli, the priest in the Old Testament, he could run the temple. He could, he could tell you what all the sacrifices were for different, different situations. But he could not run his own family. Remember, the people of Israel would come and say, your sons are doing this, this, and this. And he would just reprimand them, clap in the hands, everything's good. And so God had to take action. He could run the temple, but he couldn't run his family. David could run a kingdom and lead his men into battle. He was a leader. A great leader at that. But as we know, most of his family uh, um, had their own way of thinking. In 1 Kings 1, 5 and 6, it says that, Ad, and I don't know how to pronounce it, Adonijah, one of his sons tried to do a coup. He tried to kill his father and be a king. There was a, um, <clears throat> a situation where Absalom is also trying to rule over him. We must be leading our flesh, not let the flesh lead us. We must be leading our family, and must be, we should be able to lead the fallen to Jesus. I thank God for all the good men that are here at church. 1 Timothy 2, 1, 3 says, Therefore, I exhort you, first of all, that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and all who are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of our, of our Savior. Remember, man, we must be willing to stand in the gap. We must be willing to be able to save, to bring others to Jesus Christ. And how can we do that best? By putting the example, by being the role model. And lastly, men who have learned to love. <clears throat> In 1 Corinthians chapter three, uh, 13, it says, that though I speak with the tongue of man and of angels, but have not love, I have become a sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. And though I have a gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. Man, who have learned to love. One of the things, especially in Latin, in Latin America, I, uh, one of the hardest things to see is to, for a man to show affection. As a matter of fact, there's a great uh, or a well-known singer in, in Spanish uh, that's, that uh, sings this song that is called Dicen que los hombres no deben llorar. And, and, and basically the title says, they say that men should not cry. And And... He goes on through, you know, like uh, the whole song, and and um, and somehow it seemed like crying or having emotions or being able to show affection 
uh, is, is kind of like a weakness for man. You don't show affection. Man, don't cry. You know? But the fact of the matter is, is that uh, we do have emotions. It does hurt us when, when somebody hurts our feelings. But hey, we got to man up, right? Do you love God? And I believe every man here will say, definitely we love God. That's why we're here. We want to know what God wants to say. Well, do you understand that as you love God, the closer you get to God, you can also get close, closer to um, your wife? Uh, a couple of weeks back when we, uh, um, when we were here for Chris and uh, Rainbow's wedding, I, I enjoyed the, the illustration that uh, Mark said, that as the family, that, the couple that prays together, stay together, as they pray to God and get closer to God, two continue to become one. It is hard to pray together when you're at odds with each other, right? It is hard to pray as a family together if, if, uh, if you're not in the same accord, isn't it? Now, it is easier said than done, especially with kids. It's, it's, it's harder to round them up and, you know, say, come on, kids, or, or we're going to pray. But listen, if you love God, if we, if we honest and truly are passionate for Jesus, isn't it true that we will come and learn to love God even more? Men who have learned to love, first of all, the Father. But secondly, men who have learned to love their families. Now, we cover this in the leadership because they lead their families also, but when we said the only real leadership is loving leadership, God admonishes every husband to love their wife. And this may seem like a strange admonition because we say, of course. Some will say, if I didn't love her, I wouldn't have married her. But wait a minute. Love, as used here, means far more than just affection. It means more than emotional feelings or satisfaction. It means that you or I are going to seek the welfare and happiness of the person we are going to love. I'm pretty sure everybody here loves their wives and their kids. Speaking of the man. Therefore, we would seek their welfare, their, 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 their happiness, that they will feel secure within this home. I praise God for each man here that are willing to stand in the gap. That your effort and your dedication is continuing to be felt within the congregation. You would be surprised how many people would see each one of you as a different role model. And you say, well, maybe this person, I don't even talk to this person that much because I sit on this aisle and I sit on that aisle. Oh, but they see you as you come in and they see your family. As they see, we see how you react with your wife. I want to be like that when I retire. I see, I have great examples of, of each one of you. I told my wife, honey, when we retire, I want to be just like that couple. You know? And then my wife says, why? Do you play golf? I'm like, no. I don't play golf. But if you teach me, I'll learn. You know, that's what we need. We must not lose that passion to be able to mentor the next generation that's coming because definitely we do not want to be the extinct reality here. The government does want to change what a couple is, but there is no changing. A, a marriage is a man and a woman. God has ordained the, the holiness and the sanctity of marriage. And we are looking and God is looking for more men to continue filling the gap, to stay str strong with their vows, with their convictions. A man who will love not just the father, who will love their family, but also who will love, check this out, the fellowship of the church. As, as we go uh, uh, and share the word, and sometimes we'll talk to somebody who doesn't, you know, um, attend church, but they, but they were raised in a church, and we tell them, have you considered coming to church? Or, you know, 
if you if you're on church, would you consider coming? And they say, Oh no, no, no. I have Jesus in my heart. I worship him at home. Did you know? They tell me, did you know that we can worship God at home? I don't doubt that. That's great. But listen, God provided the church so that the, in the fellowship of the church, we could be a blessing to each other. Isn't it true? I see each one of you as my extended family. Yes, we do have uh, uncles and cousins and, 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 and I have sisters and my, my mom and, and grandma, but, but the extended family is a great blessing. You know? Husbands, love your wife just as Christ also loved the church. And he gave himself for her. He loves the church. So should we. If Jesus loves the church, we should also love the church. In Isaiah 43, 4 it says, Since you were precious in my sight, you have been honored and I have loved you. Therefore, I will give men for you and people for your life. We are precious in God's sight. In 1 Thessalonians it says, 4, 9, But concerning brotherly love, you have... No need that I should write to you, for you yourselves are taught by God to love one another. Now, how is it that we are going to be able to love one another, to be able to share one another's burdens, to be able to learn from each other if we never see each other? But as we come on Sundays, as we come for prayer, as we come to, to, to different men's meetings or, or, or a, a different uh, activities during the week, we see God doing a mighty work within His church. Jesus said in John 15, he says, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, what can we do? Nothing. Without me, you can't do nothing. So I thank God for the few good men that God has given us here. But you know what? We need a few more, right? There's always room for more. My challenge for us today is, how about if we start first in our home and then in the community? How can we be mentors? We be mentors to those who don't have that role model. How can we be uh, 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 people of faith and, and plead for the community, knowing that there's a high, in, a high crime rate knowing that there's a lot of young people who are being raised in a single-parent home. Could it be me, Lord? You could say that, that you want me to be able to mentor somebody. And you say, well, I don't know anybody from the community, but maybe you know somebody from the church, and you say, I'm going to bring him along. He doesn't know uh, what a role model is or who, who to follow. Let me be his mentor. Or maybe he's being raised by his father, but he needs a mom. Let me just tag along. That is the impact that the church can have for the church. I wish I could be a drill sergeant and say, okay, man, let's stand up, stand straight, start marching. But I'm not. I'm not, I'm not a drill sergeant. But I guess as men, we like to be challenged, don't we? Isn't it true? I, uh, when, uh, when I uh, hear the challenge that uh, Moses gave the people of Israel when uh, he came down Mount Sinai, and he literally, or I don't know if he did a line, but he literally said, those who are for God go on this side, those who are, who are still continuing to be rebellious stay on that side, and, you know, who's for God, you know? And I like the challenge. When I was like 12 or 13, I hate when somebody said, I dare you to do this. You know why? <laughs> I was like, sure. And then he was me jumping out of a second-story building, you know, trying to fly on, on a mountain of sand or whatever, and oh, all bruised up. Don't challenge a man to do something that's crazy because he might even do it. Listen, I'm not asking you to do something crazy. I'm asking you to stand up for God. Your wives would really appreciate you continuing to do that. You know that? Stand up for God because God deserves that attention. Stand up for God because God deserves to have men that are willing to, to pray and intercede for his people. Does that mean that we haven't done that? I have not said that. I think we are continuing to ask God to guide us, but we can always get better at it. Can we? 
Let us pray. Father, today as we honor our, fa- our, our fathers, and even those that probably weren't there, those who were raised without a, a father and don't have no, uh, no knowledge of what it is to have a role model. Oh, Lord, we just pray that uh, your Holy Spirit would give them such a, a, a presence in their lives that they will see that even those setbacks could be made into learning lessons to worship you, Lord, to seek you, to lean on you, to be leaders for their community and for their families, to, be, to, to love you, Father, to love their families, to be committed, men of their word. Oh, thank you, Lord, for every man here. I ask that you bless them, Father, and that as they continue on the journey of raising kids, or now maybe even uh, seeing their, their third generation with their grandkids, Lord, may your church continue to be blessed by these great group of men. In Christ Jesus we pray.